From WXII 12 News, this is special coverage of the coronavirus impact. Social distancing means that we can't hold our loved ones close, but now is the time to hold tight to our faith. Today's message from state leaders, stay at home now if you want to be around for next year's Easter and Passover celebrations. The fight against COVID-19 is far from over, but we're learning more troubling data about specific groups of people this virus is infecting and why. Plus, late changes. Schools still open or out, rather, until at least mid-May. Now some school leaders are adjusting graduation requirements. We're going to hear from a high school senior. And new policies to protect some of the most vulnerable COVID-19 patients. What's happening now at nursing homes in the state. Those headlines and much more in a moment, but first we want to get you ready for the possibility of another round of severe weather. Chief Meteorologist Lenny Pope's tracking some fast moving storms that are headed in our direction. Lenny. Yeah, absolutely. We had our first round of storms roll through earlier this afternoon and this evening. So now on the radar, things are a whole lot quieter out there. We're going to have a little bit of a lull, and then we are waiting on another round of storms that will be moving in from the northwest. You can see the storms as they pushed through our area earlier today, and they did leave a trail of damage with some trees and some power lines down over parts of Guilford, Alamance, Rockingham. Henry and Pennsylvania counties. Now we're looking for another round of storms. We're still under a slight risk overnight, higher risk to our north and west, and that is where right now they are dealing with tornado watches that are out for Kentucky, for Tennessee, also parts of Missouri. That front is heading our way and it will be here by daybreak. So we are anticipating a line of storms to push in here in the pre-dawn hours. Damaging wind and large hail, those are our big Biggest concerns with the storms between now and about 2 a.m. Things should be very quiet around 2, 3, 4 a.m. Some of those storms will start to move into the mountains and then they'll start to press into the triad by about 5 a.m., 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, it looks like. And yes, we could have some heavy winds with those storms as they push through. We'll have more on what you can expect, the timing and when things will clear out coming up. So stick around. All right, Winera, keeping an eye on it for us, Lainey. Thank you. Now back to our coronavirus coverage. In North Carolina, state leaders are taking more steps to slow the spread and get sick patients healthy again. Meanwhile, the state reports more than 3,400 people have tested positive. 53 people have died. 19 of those victims are from the Piedmont Triad. Guilford County reported new deaths today, and just tonight, Rockingham County reported a second person has died there. The region has at least 441 confirmed cases. Right now, only a few counties are reporting the number of coronavirus patients who are recovering, but there is some positive news here for the Triad. 59 people have recovered in Forsyth County. In Davidson County, the number is 36. New tonight, a Greensboro police officer has tested positive for COVID-19. They are in quarantine right now. The department says the officer is doing well and it's working to reduce the risk of other officers getting sick. GBD is also disinfecting equipment and spaces that the officer may have come into contact with. Well, Governor Roy Cooper says an Orange County nursing home is a hot spot for coronavirus cases with at least 60 people testing positive there. Two people died and seven are in the hospital. The governor did not name the nursing home, but two representatives from Orange County told WRAL TV that the hotspot is Pruitt Health Carolina Point in Durham. There are new restrictions in place now for nursing homes and long term care facilities to limit the spread of this virus. Staff members will now be required to wear masks and residents and staff will be screened daily for symptoms. The restrictions are also closing common areas and they require infected residents to be moved to a separate part of each facility. Governor Roy Cooper signed another executive order today, this one involving additional health care workers, resources and equipment. It also increases the number of hospital beds that may be necessary and helps essential workers with child care. Governor Cooper says the Department of Health and Human Services is offering financial help for child care for frontline essential workers. He's also planning to sign another executive order for all essential businesses like grocery stores to implement more social distancing measures for customers. The very latest tally from Johns Hopkins University shows around 430,000 people across this country have come down with COVID-19. Almost 15,000 people have died from it. 
Health experts are still working to determine how COVID-19 is impacting different groups of people, particularly African Americans. Our Jared Hill is in Washington with a look at the data. Based on the data from a handful of states, we do know that COVID-19 is disproportionately impacting black Americans. Now there's a push from the state to the federal level to figure out a better way to collect some of this data and how to save lives. The medical community is pointing to the fact that black people tend to have a higher likelihood of underlying conditions like heart disease and asthma, which can make the coronavirus worse. That's why one of the hardest hit areas, New York City, is ramping up an information campaign targeted at black and Latino neighborhoods. New York's governor is also focusing on testing, but not just for the virus. Are more public workers Latino and African American? who don't have a choice, frankly, but to go out there every day. Now, meanwhile, members of Congress are trying to get language put in the next COVID-19 bill that would require that federal agencies collect and report data specific to race. Reporting in Washington, I'm Jared Hill. Jared, thank you. Racial data is only available for a portion of coronavirus patients in North Carolina. But here's what we do know. The Department of Health and Human Services says black or African American people make up 38% of the state's laboratory confirmed cases. Caucasians make up more than half. Black or African Americans make up 35% of deaths. Caucasians make up 63% of the deaths reported. Again, information on race is not available for every case in North Carolina. The state says it's missing data for more than 1,000 cases. New tonight, the Associated Press is reporting that the strategic national stockpile is nearly out of N95 respirators. It's also running low on surgical masks, face shields, gowns, and other supplies that frontline medical workers desperately need to treat coronavirus patients. The House Oversight Committee released documents showing about 90% of all the personal protective equipment in the stockpile has been distributed to state and local governments. What's left is being held in reserve for federal workers. Licensed pharmacists are authorized to order and administer, uh, administer rather COVID-19 tests now, thanks to new federal guidance from the federal government. The tests will have to be authorized by the FDA. The Secretary for Health and Human Services says giving pharmacists this opportunity allows them to play a larger role in the response to the virus and makes testing more accessible for people. Coronavirus models show that social distancing is working and it's raising hopes, but also fears that Americans might stop following the guidelines and trigger a second wave of outbreaks. The White House Coronavirus Task Force stresses this is not the time to let up on social distancing. Your foot on the gas and make sure that we continue to strongly mitigate. Today, the White House and Congress started negotiating the next round of aid to pump an additional $250 billion into a program to help small businesses stay afloat and pay their workers. A vote in the Senate is expected as early as tomorrow. And tomorrow, an infectious disease expert with Lake Forest Baptist Health will give an update on the virus in our region and some insight into what the next few weeks are going to look like. You can watch Dr. Christopher Ohl's briefing on WXI 12 starting at 1030 on Thursday morning. Well, the coronavirus has really thrown high school seniors for a loop, and now Winston-Salem Forsyth County school leaders are trying to make things a bit simpler for them. If students have already met the required 22 credits, they are able to officially complete high school this month. Our Brandon Bates talked to a high school senior and his mom tonight who say they're thankful, but clearly still trying to comprehend the whole situation. Brandon. Yeah, Brianna, good evening to you. That senior that I talked to said he's really glad that this is happening. He's happy that his senior school year won't have to extend into summer. But he says his biggest concern is his senior baseball season that's being cut short. Take a look. Yeah, I couldn't wait to be a senior. Jason Wynn is sharing a unique experience with the class of 2020. With concerns of the coronavirus spreading, students have been taken away from school and away from big moments that most seniors look forward to. I can't control it, and that's the, the part that really sucks. To take some pressure off of seniors, Winston-Salem Forsyth County school leaders announced Wednesday that they're cutting some requirements, which will allow some students to graduate early. If seniors have passed all of their classes and met all requirements by the time the third quarter grades are posted, their school year can be finished this month. I think it makes it a little easier knowing, like, you know, I've worked all three quarters just for, say, to keep my grades good and stuff so I could graduate. And then, you know, this online class stuff, it's hard. 
Seniors will receive a pass or fail grade for spring courses up until this point or have the option to withdraw from graduation required classes and make them up online. It makes it easier for us. Jason was in the middle of his senior baseball season, something that he's looked forward to forever. Couldn't wait to you know, get to my senior year to have a senior season play a baseball. You know, I waited for it my whole life. And it's been taken away. These are the seniors on his team. They decided to take a picture together, not knowing when or if they'll ever play together again. The situation taking a toll on the entire family. He said it best. It sucks. I mean, we looked forward to this forever. And, you know, and we've watched all our friends move up and have their senior moments and, and senior night. And it doesn't look like he's going to get it this year. Jason says he plans to go to Forsyth Tech after he graduates to get his mechanics degree, and that, too, is up in the air at this point. These seniors were born during the 9-11, and now they're graduating during a pandemic. What else can happen to these poor kids? And Jason told me the last thing that he's holding on to right now is graduation. He wants nothing more than to walk across that stage. He says he's preparing for the worst, but hoping for the best. So far, the school district hasn't made any changes to graduation. They're still set for June 12th and 13th. Reporting live in my home tonight, Brandon Bates, WXII 12 News.